I am glad that I did not blind buy it everyone because... and welcome back to my channel. So today I have one of the most exciting and longest in the making videos I think that I've ever filmed on my channel and it is my buying guide for Juliet Has a Gun. Now Juliet Has a Gun is an incredible fragrance house. I've been so so intrigued by them ever since I first heard about their Not A Perfume. And then when I got into fragrances more um, in sort of like this year, I really, really wanted to sample everything from the brand. So I decided to get their sample set and just, you know, sniffed my way through the fragrances. And there are some really, really good ones and really unique ones in there. Um, I'm so, so excited to get a full size if you buy a sample set from them you will be getting a voucher that you can redeem towards a full size, which is really, really cool. Overall, I have to say, like, the, the way that they communicate with customers, um, their customer service is gorgeous. I have been very, very impressed on, you know, that side of the brand as well. Um, obviously, they make great fragrances, but I think it is always good and sort of almost a necessity just to have a great care for your customers, and that is definitely the case for Juliet Has a Gun. So yeah, without further ado, let me tell you about the fragrances I've tried, my favorites, and then um, I think in the end you might have to help me decide which one I should pick up as a full size because there's, I think, four that I'm between and they're all so gorgeous. Now I have all of the scent strips here, so I'm just going to be picking out the one that I will be talking to you about, and we're going to be starting with this one. Um, this one is another oud. And when I first read it, I was like, okay, what, just another oud? But this one, it's very interesting because immediately when you spray it on, it is very, very dry. So it is a very dry oud and that sort of makes it very sharp. It's not sharp in sort of like a choking you way, but the dryness definitely gives it an edge. There is also raspberry in here, which this fruitiness comes sort of, comes in piece by piece. I have to say, when you first spray it, it is just this dry um, wooden oud. And as I said, it gives it an edge, but at the same time, because it is not heavy and not choking, it's almost light. And I've been wearing this now, so I've been wearing this throughout the summer. So, you know, this is even something that you could wear as a summer scent. And it is definitely one of my favorites of the house. I was very, very surprised by this. And yeah, I have to say this one, I was so, so sure that I was going to get another one, but then I wore this one again recently and I just don't know. Maybe this one would be the perfect scent now going into autumn as well. Anyway, I'm going to just quickly, because i like written all the notes down, so I'm always going to be telling you the official notes. And for this one, the official notes are bergamot, oudwood, raspberry, norlimbanol, musk, and ambroxan. So it is a very, very good combination. As I said, it's dry, it's not going to choke anyone. It has an edge, but you can wear it during the day and in the summer as well. So definitely a fantastic fragrance for me nothing like I've ever expected or yeah even smelled before I I really really like another oud now my next favorite you guys will have seen as well before if you've seen my sort of top worn summer fragrances this one is vanilla vibes and this is just like a fresh ozonic salt vanilla it is really really good I've loved this one the vanilla in here is a bit understated, so it's not like overly creamy or sweet. It is sweet, but it just sort of like balances out the salt in here. And I think I've mentioned this before, but this can turn incredibly ozonic. So there was a day where I wore this and it was so, so ozonic that it almost made me hungry, you know? When when you've spent your day outside in the sea air, you, you notice how you get hungry, right? And that is almost what this scent did for me. Um, there was a day where I wore this and it was almost too ozonic for me, but usually I love that ozonic quality about it as well. And as I said, I've been wearing it throughout the summer a ton. And I think, quite honestly, this is probably the most unique scent that I've ever smelled. Um, and especially from this house, like if you if you want something that you cannot get with a different house, I would definitely go for Vanilla Vibes. It is amazing, amazing, amazing. And I highly, highly recommend that you at least go and smell this one. 
Also, um, this one, the another oud obviously lasts quite long and, and you have people smelling you. But this one as well, and I was surprised because it is a bit lighter and this ozonic thing, I never thought that it could last very, very long. But this lasts a good eight hours on me, maybe six hours on, you know, days where it's not as good. But it, I have this like sillage and bubble of scent around me as well with this the whole day. And it is really gorgeous. As I said, please, please go and smell this one. It is fantastic. So now going for the official notes. It has vanilla, orchid absolute, sea salt, brown musk, tonka bean, benzoin, and sandalwood. Um, for me, as I said, it is probably the most unique fragrance that Juliet Has a Gun makes. That was actually the one that I was sure I was getting a full size of. But then again, I've smelled the oud and I thought, you know, maybe for the autumn time the oud would be great. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, vanilla vibes, I can very highly recommend it. At least go and smell it. If you're not sure about it, at least go and smell it. Um, because there is something so unique about it that I think it's worth that everyone goes and smells this. Now, next up is Citizen Queen. And this one is a very classic and beautiful scent. Um, again, not something that I have in my collection. It's not a contender for me for the full size, just because there are a few others that I really, really enjoy. But this one, again, I find it quite unique. I have to say there is nothing that is similar to this, in my opinion. Or at least in my collection, I should say. But Citizen Queen is very... it has a lot of aldehyde, so it is very fizzy. And it is fresh as well. Um, it has a bit of iris. And initially, when I first smelled this, I said, hmm... This kind of smells like, you know, like lemony bath salts in the best way possible. So yeah, it has this like fizziness, it has the iris, and I would say it is a classic scent. Um, I don't really want to say vintage, but it definitely has a bit of a vintage vibe. Um, I would put it classic, maybe not quite vintage, but yeah, it, it goes into that direction if you know what I mean. And this one, the lasting power of it is quite good as well, I would say around six hours. And yeah, the sillage on here I found to be sort of moderate, like sometimes you smell it a bit more, sometimes a little bit less, but it is really, really nice. And I can, if you are into those a little bit more like vintagey classic scents, I would recommend you go smell this one as well. And now for official notes, we have of course aldehydes and bergamot at the top. And then interestingly enough, this has a top note of leather as well which I don't really like specifically get, but it makes sense because there is some kind of like a depth to it that could come from the letter. And then in the hard notes, you have iris, tuberose and orange blossom. And here the iris really, really dominates, I have to say. I don't get orange blossom, I don't get uh, tuberose, but the iris is really, really dominant. And then in the base notes, you have ambroxan, labdanum and vanilla. So. As I said, it, it goes into that vintagey classic vibe, but it's definitely a super nice fragrance as well. The next scent is one of their newest ones. Actually, right until I think last week, this one was the newest one that they had brought out. Last week they brought out a, um, I think it's called Incredible Musk. I have not smelled that one yet, but I think when I go and order the full size of whatever I choose, I'm gonna order a sample of that. But until last week, this one had been the newest from the house. This one is Lipstick Fever. And from what I understand, this was created to sort of represent like vintagey lipstick smells. And for me, that association fits really, really well. I think it has this very nice sort of like berry floral and a little bit of a sweet scent that I definitely would be expecting from a vintage lipstick. So while it is like very delicious and sweet and fruity, it has a bit of a um, powderiness to it as well. So not just the like vintage lipstick, but also just vintage makeup. Um, as I said, for me, the association of this is great. This one is also on the very long lasting side out of all of them. This one, whenever I wore it, was at least there for like seven to eight hours. So really, really good. Um, this was a contender for the full size, but it's not as strong. I think right now I'm really going between the Another Oud and Vanilla Vibes. But this one was a strong contender for a while for the buying the full size because it is really, really, really gorgeous. Now the official notes in this are very, very close to what I've already told you. It is Raspberry and Violet Absolute at the top. 
you have iris and patchouli as the heart notes and then you have vanilla at the base so really beautiful red floral uh, sorry red fruit um, association to classic lipstick for me is really really there um, and yeah it was a very very strong contender but I think just right now it, it, it's sort of in the like definitely in the top five for me my next fragrance is called mm, which is really really uh, a good name for this fragrance it was created to basically resemble that you know you smell something you're like ah this is really really good and that is exactly what it is for me it is also a gourmand I mean this really really it just smells edible it is amazing so it's very sweet it reminds me of sort of like a red berry panna cotta kind of thing and definitely was a contender for the full size as well because i think you know for the autumn having a gourmand that is not you know vanillary and caramelly i think would be amazing and this one as i said really has this like panna cotta dessert vibe i think the website describes this as like a zero calorie treat and for me Definitely. I mean, if you wear this and someone's coming up to you and is not like, you know, where's the dessert, then uh, I would be quite surprised. It is really, really good. Um, as I said, contender number four. This was the contender number four for my full size. Uh, right now, like the more I smell it, the more it's getting harder to decide just which one I want uh, as a full size. But mm, it's definitely, definitely a strong contender. The official notes in here are um, raspberry, geranium and neroli on the top. You have orange blossom, jasmine and tuberose in the heart and patchouli and sandalwood at the base. So interestingly enough, there's no vanilla in here. But as I said, it reminds me a bit of a, like a berry panna cotta. And I think the sandalwood might be this like creamy panna cotta uh, vibe that I get. But yeah, overall, if you like gourmands and you might be into a gourmand that's not caramelly or vanilla as I said then this is a good choice and I would highly recommend you go and smell it now moving forward to another sandalwood scent this one is called sunny side up and it is created as sort of just like happy sunny solar scent and for me this is definitely solar it is creamy and it is a very classic sandalwood in not in a bad sense but in a sense that I have definitely smelled something that is similar to this before so so to me, it is lacking a little bit of a very unique characteristic. I think for a sandalwood scent, it is quite predictable. I'm, I'm sure that I've smelled something like this before and I might even have something that is very, very similar in my collection. So yeah, nevertheless, if you like sandalwoods, if you like that, then I think this is a good, good choice. And um, yeah, it is a lovely fragrance. It is a happy fragrance. And... Yeah, just just not for me i'm not the uh, biggest fan of like straight up sandalwood fragrances either way and then as i said i also have a feeling that i have something very similar to this in my collection already the official notes for it are sandalwood vanilla absolute jasmine uh, at the top and then interestingly enough you have another sandalwood at the heart together with jasmine sambac and iris butter and the base notes are iso e ambrette and salicylate which very very interesting combination on the notes i mean just reading through all these names it makes it seem like there's something completely different going on but um for me it is a very like true classic and uh, as i said somewhat predictable sandalwood fragrance mm, so now going to another one that i really really like this one's called lady vengeance it is a rose fragrance if you don't like rose then you will not like this at all and it is a very classic rose fragrance in that it has this patchouli base to it as well. It has ever it has a very, very slight lavender in here, but it is a very elegant rose. I mean, this is something that I would most definitely wear to like an evening event. You know, it's just somewhere where you want to be really sophisticated, something that is rather strong, long lasting as well. This one is definitely something that, you know, everyone that's at the same table as you will be able to smell you. And yeah, it is, as I said, it is a very, very classic, like, gross patchouli scent. I am into that. So for me, this one would be a great rose scent as well. And yeah, as I said, it is very, very confident. Um, maybe, you know, I would probably not recommend this to a teenager, but it is very confident. And I think especially if you were to go to an event or like an evening outing, this one would be so so gorgeous 
Now the notes in here at the top are bergamot and lavender. Um, I don't get a lot of the bergamot, um, however the lavender is there in the beginning. And then the heart notes, very classically, rose and patchouli. So yeah, those are the two that really make this fragrance for me. And then at the base you have ambroxan. This combination, rose patchouli, uh, it's, just, it's just gorgeous. I really like this one as well, even though I have not put it as a contender for a full size. But then again, Autumn, maybe this is... You know what? Maybe I should just get a full size of five of these out of... Maybe not all of them this year, but I really enjoy so many of these fragrances. I think it's definitely worth going and smelling all of them if you can. Okay, now from the like heaviest and most elegant event, nighttime event scent, we're going to another one that is rather fresh and clean and beautiful. This one is called Anyway, and it kind of smells, it just smells very clean. It smells like fresh laundry out of the dryer, very unimposing, very just, you know, nice. I feel like, you know, if maybe one of your friends invited you to their toddler's birthday, this is the kind of fragrance you could wear without, you know, offending anyone. So the complete opposite, like a daytime fragrance, you know, wouldn't even bother a toddler. It is just, you know, fresh, clean, happy very nice um for me not a contender for my full size just because i wanted something that is packs a little bit more of a punch but if you just want you know a no-brainer fragrance that you can wear every day you know just before you run out of the house whether it's to the office to see friends whatever i think anyway would be a good choice now the top notes in that one are neroli and lime at the heart you have jasmine absolute and heady oil and in the base again you have ambroxa now i have four more scents to share with you the first one is this one it is called moscow mule and i was so close to blind buying this because i was like there's a very good chance i'm going to like this i am glad that i did not blind buy it because it's not my favorite out of the bunch this one is a very like fresh fizzy almost like spritzy lemon ginger mint kind of scent so it really smells like you have maybe a um, cup of moscow mule in front of you very fresh as i said very citric but for me as i said not a contender for a full size now i wouldn't maybe say that this is you know the standout from the brand i think for me that is vanilla vibes but this one is quite unique and definitely worth a try if you like citric scents or maybe even ginger scents. Um, I feel like ginger is not a very common ingredient, at least in the perfumes that I tend to go for. So if that's something for you, I think this is well worth a try because it is really, really unique. Now at the top here, you have bergamot, ginger and lime. In the heart notes, you have jasmine and apple essence, so really fruity, really spritzy. And then in the base notes you have Ambroxan, Norlimbanol and Ambretolide, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, yeah, but as I said, for me it is really about this like gingery, spritzy and fizziness that you get from this. Now the second to last one is Midnight Oud and this one is completely different from the another Oud. You smell this and it is really strong. It is a very spicy, like not dry at all. This is you know, a punch in the face kind of oud. It is very spicy, as I said, there is a little bit of a rose note in here, which makes it, you know, like florally, fruity, very, very heavy. I think this is 100% an event scent. I would not be wearing this throughout the day, not at all. Um, this is something, you know, where you really, really want people to notice you. You go into an event, you need like a punchy fragrance that gives you a lot of confidence. I think this one would be the one for you. Um, it is, in my opinion, very unisex. Um, I think there's no issue that a man could wear this, um, you know, but it, it doesn't lean very female, it doesn't lean very male. So for me, there is no, like, there's no border for this one, really. And yeah, as I said, the, the rose note, very punchy, very, very strong. So for me, 100% a night and event scent. Um, the official notes in here are at the top you have rose and birch tour which i find it interesting that rose is a top note because rose i can smell throughout the whole um sort of like life cycle of this if you will um i don't think the rose is a top note that leaves very quickly at the heart you have sadawood patchouli and oud and the base is skyak wood and setalox 
So as I said, a lot more punchy, a lot more lively maybe than the Another Oud. Um, for me, not as wearable as I said, really more of an event fragrance, but if that's what you're looking for, I think this one will definitely be, you know, another confidence boost and, you know, really push itself onto everyone that you're interacting with. Now, the last fragrance that I can describe very, very well before going to probably Juliette Hasegan's most favorite or I guess most famous perfume, um, the one that I have here is called Miss Charming and this one is a rose as well, but it is very lemony and fresh. So it is a refreshing rose, maybe a bit more of a white rose than potentially a red rose. Yeah, so this has no like heavy or patchouli notes in it at all. And it is kind of what I would imagine that an actual bed of roses smells like. But yeah, as I said, like no heavy base notes in this at all, which, you know, is a really refreshing and is really, really good, but it kind of shows in the longevity. So for me, after like five to six hours, this is gone. Um, which again, it's fine. If you're wearing like a refreshing scent, um, for me, that is a really good uh, longevity already. For me, having like a refreshing rose perfume with that kind of longevity would be fine. I have to say I really, really like the scent and it is very well done. I think rose a lot of times can come in very strong, very classic, very heavy, very mature. But this one is definitely like a young and fresh rose and yeah, really, really beautiful in my opinion as well. The note structure in here, as I said, it is quite simple. There's interestingly enough, like no lemon or lime. Um, the top note is Moroccan rose, the middle or the heart is wild berries and the base is musk. So interestingly enough, there's no lemon in here, even though I get a lot of this like fresh lemony rose. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, much younger, really, really nice as well. Um, it would be a contender for me as well. Maybe if we were going into the spring, I would tend to something like this a little bit more than the other ones I've picked out. But yeah, another one that is, yeah, I, I'm not even sure what I've put in my top five. And maybe I'll do another video just showing you like my top five fragrances from the brand. Let me know if that is something that you would enjoy. Um, I, it, I know it would be hard to pick for sure. And now the most famous perfume, I think from Juliet has a gun, also the hardest to describe. Um, it is, of course, not a perfume. So not a perfume is a yeah fragrance perfume from Juliet Has a Gun, which is exactly that. It is not a perfume. It only has one note and one ingredient, I guess, which is Cetalox. And Cetalox just works with your skin chemistry. So you apply it and then depending on, you know, who how your skin chemistry is and, and who you are, um, it will smell different on every single person. Now, I've heard that around like 36% of people cannot smell Cetalox at all. So I would definitely recommend giving this one a try if you are thinking about buying one, like either get a sample or spray it on you in a store, because it would be really unfortunate if you go out and then, you know, it's a scent that you cannot smell. On me personally, whenever I apply it, it turns into a like, musky citric note which is really interesting um so it is very yeah it's like a like a fresh juicy citrus with a little bit of musk um so yeah that is my experience with not a perfume thankfully i can smell it um but yeah it is really hard for me to give you a recommendation or you know tell you anything besides that because it will be very very different on another person and yeah, with that being said, I would be very interested if you have tried Not A Perfume. Let me know how it smells on you, if you can smell it at all. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I had so much fun doing this. It really, Juliet Has A Gun is a house that is so, so close to my heart. I think it really came across, hopefully, that I adore their fragrances. And, you know, there are so many that are so, so beautiful. And uh, yeah, let me know which one you think I should get a full size of. I'm really, really torn. Another Oud, Vanilla Vibes, mm, Lipstick Fever, maybe even Lady Vengeance or something like Miss Charming. I'm not sure. But let me know which one I should get a full size of first. Maybe let's put it this way because realistically I will be picking up more than one full size uh, sometime in my life. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I cannot wait to see you in my next one. Please subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Also follow me on my Instagram. And yeah, I'll talk to you very soon. Bye guys. Bye.